Learning to design in a serious game. A contribution by Markus Voss, Lucy Voskut, Thorsten Sauer and Mark Nutzmann. Presented at the ENPD conference in Herning 2020. In this presentation, we would like to report on how we gamified a second year engineering design project in a mechanical engineering program by introducing playful elements into the course, which already incorporates problem-based and project-oriented learning as well as design-build test experiences. But first a word on what we are teaching. Engineering design is one of the main pillars of the mechanical engineering curriculum taught from first to third year in bachelor programs and equivalent to around 12% of the total teaching. In the lectures, students learn how to execute correct technical drawings according to the applicable standards, how to calculate the strengths and lifetime of standard machine elements like roller bearings, bolted connections, shafts under diverse load conditions, etc. And they also get to know methods that help to structure the product development process. Classically, Two-thirds of the contact hours are reserved for talk and chalk lectures. But there's a long tradition in engineering design in letting students study problems and work in projects. This engineering design project serves to internalize and reflect the theories and practices they heard about before. For assessing the learning outcomes, there is still an examination that counts for half of the final grade. In this presentation, we will also provide indications for the inclusion of measurable project outcomes in the course grading. What's a game? Before we start, we want to define the basic notions. In our work, we adopted a comprehensive definition of two authors from the MIT. They define a game to be a system in which players engage in an artificial conflict defined by rules that results in a quantifiable outcome. Literature also distinguishes between gaming and playing. Both concepts can be seen as the two poles of a continuum. At one end, we find rather unstructured and spontaneous activities that express a certain playfulness, and at the other end of the continuum stand structured activities with explicit rules that games are based on. In order to underline that games that have an explicit and carefully thought out educational purpose and are not intended to be primarily for amusement, some authors speak of serious games. When we look at how our learning setup evolved over the years, we would describe that it is somehow like stepping up a stairway of learning approaches. As many other universities do, we started with problem-based learning and let our students work in a project-oriented way. As we felt that this was a pure paper chase game, we began to create space for making individual experiences by designing building and testing real products. And recently we enlarged our framework by adding playful elements of a serious game. 
This graduation of learning approaches also seems to exist within the research presented at the EPDE conferences. Among the totality of more than 1,300 publications currently accessible in the publications repository of the Design Society, the vast majority addresses problem-based and project-oriented learning with 36 and 60 contributions respectively. With 30 contributions, design-built test experiences attract far less interest. In comparison, game-based learning with 60 contributions only rather is the wallflower among the learning approaches. Our objective for gamifying the engineering design project has been first to intensify the immersive character of the course. We want our students to dive into their task completely like a diver in the sea and to forget about grades and everything for a while. Novice design engineers have a tendency to strive for the technically best solution instead of looking for one that is largely accepted by the market. The rules of the game should, second, make our students also consider economic efficiency and learn how to sell their ideas. The playful setup of the course should, third, invite our students to explore the perspectives of different stakeholders, swapping masks and see things from the angle of the developer as well as from the angle of the customer. In last year's autumn term, the course was attended by 63 students. In the engineering design project, the students worked in 10 teams. We provided piano wire and asked our students in the design brief to develop a handheld device for winding up compression springs. Already during the early stages of development, our students could experience that the concept sets the course of the rest of the development. Should the wire be wound around the pin or should the kinematic chain be inversed so that the pin can turn? As the spring winders should be manufactured on 3D printers, the students later also prepare CAD models. The game character of our course can be best explained with help of the project plan. It makes the students go through the whole product development process within eight weeks only. Consequently, the schedule is governed by tight time constraints. In our project setting, we employed the so-called WE model in which the steps of the product development process are arranged in the shape of the Latin capital letter V. Many of you may know the V model from structuring the development process of mechatronic products. The V model helped to express the main characteristics of our game-based project. After half of the time, the teams swap roles. First, all teams were developers of spring winding devices. The corresponding milestones can be found at the left lateral side of the V. Later, all teams assumed the role of a company that orders the device and manufactures springs with it and had to respect the milestones at the right lateral side of the V. The strength of the Wii model is that it forces to check the progress made in the design continuously. In this way, the dimensioning of the elastic properties of the spring that the producer of the device has made at the beginning of the project is validated when the buyer of the device 
tests if the spring complies with the mutually agreed requirements at the end of the project. And practical testing also revealed that the concepts of the 10 groups differed widely in terms of manufacturing time. And at the bottom of the Wii, we can see that the purchase decision from the ordering party has to be made solely on basis of the product documentation that the developers furnished. With help of short video sequences, students clock the manufacturing of the springs on the devices they have bought. Here we see how a student Und los. cuts piano wire to length, inserts one end into the bore of the pin, takes up the number of specified windings, Clips both ends, and unscrews the helical spring from the removable pin body. Final inspection. Stop! The students also had to prove that their springs met the specifications. <coughs> Therefore, they checked the size tolerances with help of go and no-go gauge. And also inspected the travel of the spring under specific load conditions. We want to conclude our findings from gamifying an engineering design project by relating them to the four elementary forms of play described by the ancient Greek terms Agon, Alea, Mimesis and Ilinx. Agon relates to a competitive element. In our project course, competition between the teams incited motivation to create innovative solutions. Alea adds chance. Naturally, games imply the risk that players perceive its rules to be aleatory, simplifying real-world problems. However, the students' reactions confirmed us that measurables from the game such as the cost-income ratio that has been computed from game variables for the device manufacturer, as well as for the spring winder, were generally very well accepted by the participants. Mimesis involves role-playing, role repetition between a developing and ordering party help to point out that solutions in general should not be too complicated, but always a compromise between technical feasibility and customer request. And Illings designates loss of control in the sense of altering perception. Perhaps the main achievement, the game character, kindled a lot of enthusiasm among the students and made some nearly forget that their assignment is just a simulation of the design process. Thanks for listening. Game over. <laughs>